Hello, welcome to On The Bench with all the best local sports talk from here in the region. Well, joining me in the studio tonight, I'm delighted to say, Bobby McKeown and Omar Pasha from the Hull Stingrays. Hi, guys. Hi. Massive week for the club. Coming up later, we're going to be going behind the scenes at the Hull Ice Arena and speak to a few more of the Stingrays. We've got another edition of Jim Gale's Home Workouts as well, and of course, our regular highlights from the Hull Stingrays. We're giving them plenty of plugs tonight. Well, what a massive week. Bobby, Bobby McKeown, first of all, just how big has it been for you? Oh, it's been a massive uh, result for us at the weekend there, obviously, with uh, double header and the aggregate scores. And, and to come out against a team who were fighting for the title right up until the last weekend. So, and us finishing seventh, that was a good one for us, a very good one. Yeah, Omar, you don't do things the easy way, do you? No, probably not. Probably we should uh, maybe keep it simple, but no, it's exciting. Uh, it was a great result. It was, uh, you know, it was... Uh, Hard on the heart, that's for sure, but uh, it was exciting for the fans and uh, we got a big win, and which is great. Yeah. Uh, going to the playoff semi-final at Nottingham yeah. uh, this week, uh, in your wildest of dreams, did you really think you could do it? I thought, I thought we did. I think at the beginning of the year, uh, we had a vision of uh, being a younger team, maybe less experienced, but uh, faster and just uh, a, a team full of energy. And uh, we always believed in ourselves that we could make it. Uh, just that, you know, we face a lot of adversity during the year, but uh, yeah, it's fun to make it and uh, obviously we have two games left and hopefully we can do the, do better now. And what about the challenges for you personally, playing and managing as well? Yeah, it's it's not easy. I mean, but in a, in a club like we are, uh, there's somebody who has to do it and you know what, I was privileged to get this opportunity to do it for this year. A great group of guys working uh, with the staff and the players. It's a, It's been unbelievable, a great experience and uh, it's a lot of... Uh, Obviously, time and effort, but it's all worth it when when we get results like we did last weekend. Yeah, of course. Bobby, what about the buzz about the place at the moment? What's what's the well, feedback mean? The, the city's just going nuts just now. It's the, they, I don't think the fans expected us to do it, even because uh, we were, we came from a three-two defeat the previous night with Brayhead in Glasgow, and then they scored with about 15 minutes to go in the game, so that was a two-goal advantage for them. And then for us to get the two late goals to tie it up and then go into the extra time. And steal it basically. It yeah. was it was a good effort by everybody involved with the guys. You mentioned the fans there. I mean, just how important are they being to you? They, well, obviously, there's no fans there. There's no hockey club. Uh, it's as simple as that. But that's to watch these guys. It's been coming for 20, 25 years, twenty six years, whatever it is now. And to see some of the faces and them and how happy they were last night was just unbelievable. Omar, what about the players? I mean, you've managed to get the very best out of them to achieve this, uh, but you've had injuries as well, haven't you? Yeah, we had, uh, unfortunately, got a lot of injuries this year, uh, guys leaving as well. It wasn't easy, but you know what? Uh, credit to all the players on the team that always stuck to it, stuck to the game plan, always worked hard. You know what? It's 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 funny to say this, but when you have a young and f youthful team with uh, full of energy, they're always excited to play. They're always excited to get at the ring, so it's not it's not hard to motivate them. And even when we had our you know our downs, guys always saw the the positive side of it and. Uh, you know what? It ended up well uh, last weekend, and uh, like I said, I think there's one more weekend we we can we can do it. I think. So. You know all about injuries yourself, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, well, I broke what, my arm. What's been the situation with you? <laughs> I broke my arm at the beginning of the year, which was not the ideal situation. Uh, I got a, uh, you know, checked in the boards, and unfortunately, I was I ended up on the wrong side of it. <laughs> it got broke my arm, so uh, but now it's all healed, and uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you know, now we can step it up. Well, indeed, on the bench recently visited the Stingrays over at the Hull Ice Arena to speak to a few of the players ahead of the end of the season playoffs. Here's Matt Denson's report. Have you ever wondered what it's like to get off your armchair and go and actually see sport up close and personal? So what we're doing tonight, the whole Stingrays ice hockey team have invited us down to see what happens before, during and after the game. Looking forward to this. So having Omar as the head coach is, you know, it's, it's it's different because he's so young. 
but that's also good because the communication within the team is so much better, you know? And I think like he's got like the best out of a lot of players this, uh, this season. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes on. The atmosphere, it's something completely different, you know? It's, the match night experience is something better than what you'll experience watching football, rugby, all the other big local sports, you know? Ice hockey is it's a different breed. So I'd definitely recommend coming down and, and uh, witnessing it for yourself. I think the season so far has gone pretty well, really. I think uh, it's had its ups and downs, but like, with, with what sporting team doesn't have ups and downs in the season? I mean, sometimes it's hard to find that consistency, and sometimes we've struggled to do that. But I think overall, the win tonight puts us in a pretty good position heading into the weekend. Obviously, we're five points clear of Edinburgh now. We're gonna, probably going to make the playoffs, which is always good. So that's, that's a goal at the start of the year. Ultimately, we make the playoffs, and then anything above that is obviously a bonus really, so yeah, pretty, pretty happy with how the season's gone. Well obviously team morale is fantastic when you get a game like tonight and you see the result, win it in penalty shootout, it's dramatic, it's tense, it's, it's not good for the heart but it's, that's sport at the end of the day and you want to win. Obviously we want to take another step up the ladder. Uh, we'd like, Obviously we're sitting in seventh spot tonight, so which is quite good for us and the club's not we're usually at the bottom end of the table but we're moving up and moving the right direction and we'd like to move up again further next year. Having the fans is behind you is massive and it's if you played in a game and it's quiet, the players tend to be a bit flat, they're not happy. They need a bit of atmosphere and the atmosphere again is just something that takes the team to the next level. Well that's the atmosphere, but it's just uh, watching it in TV is like watching anything on TV. But everybody wants to be there. I would rather be there watching it live. Live sport is the best way to watch it. That's what I'm talking about. Thoroughly enjoyed that. The Stingrays invited us down to watch their ice hockey. We've done it. Brought the crew down. Get people down to the games. I tell you what, you want something fast paced, fast action and really entertaining. Ice hockey. Thank you Stingrays. Yes, thanks, Matt. Great game that night. A great example as well of having the crowd backing the team to win. So next up for the Sling Race, <laughs> you don't need me to remind you, the playoffs, Nottingham this weekend. Uh, Bobby, just explain for us, if you would, the, the playoff system, how it, how it all works. Because you finished on 49 points, didn't you? <coughs> yeah, we did. And the, the playoff system, basically, there's 10 teams in the league. Uh, we, and at the end of the season, obviously, the top eight go into the, the first versus eight, two versus seven, and all the way down to everybody. And you just play a home and away game get to the final four, and the final four is obviously at Nottingham this weekend, so you'll win the first semi-finals, one o'clock, and then the second semi-finals in the after late afternoon, and then the final the next day. Sheffield Steelers, Omar, what's in store? How have you fared this season? Uh, unfortunately, we didn't do too well against them. Uh, they've been the top team in the league. They've played uh, unbelievable this year. It's, uh, it's going to be a tough challenge, but you know what? We've, uh, we've cleaned close a few times. Uh, you know, we, we have to make a few adjustments this week in practice. and Such as? Such as uh, trying to cut down their speed, um, trying to play uh, a, a different style, like a more physical style against the, their players, sorry, and uh, just try to contain them to the outside and like keep the shots to the outside and hopefully, you know what, we'll get a few bounces here and there and get the win. What about the Nottingham Arena? Uh, as with football, home and away, uh, advantage, so on and so forth, does that count as well? I mean, are you familiar with the arena in Nottingham and how much do you think it'll be in your favour? We've played it a lot of times, so it's it's nothing new. We know what, we know what we're expecting when we walk into the place. So the guys will they just deal with it. That's what they do. Yeah. Are the guys confident? Yeah, I think uh, I think they are. I think uh, I think all the organisation is. You know, we've uh, we've kept it positive all year. Uh, we had a high expectation. So, uh, like we said, why not us for this weekend? Good. Okay. Right. We'll talk some more in a while. Well, taking us to the break now. It's our weekly feature, Jim Gale's home workouts. Have a look at this.
Hi, welcome to Jim Gale's Home Workouts. Over this fourth series, we're gonna go through a number of workouts to hit different aspects of fitness and also to hit different areas of your body. Before we get started, we need to go through some health and safety. First of all, always warm up at the start and always cool down at the end. Also, I'll be asking you to use some equipment at home, so don't use anything too heavy and never push yourselves too hard. Okay, let's get started. Today, we're gonna to go through flexibility. So we're gonna start with an ab stretch Walking the hands down and pushing the chest towards the floor. Also push the hips back and you'll feel a little bit more of a stretch. Keep the chin up, make sure you're breathing nice and easy all the way through and stretch a little bit more as you go. Then you're gonna slowly flip it round, take the legs flat to the floor and apart and then walk your hands down. Try and keep that back straight and pull the shoulder blades together if you can and you'll feel it stretch a bit more and pull the toes up to make it harder or push the toes down to make it a little bit easier. The last one we're gonna do there is lying on the back, pull the leg over and stretch over to the side. Try and keep that hand down there, don't let the arm or shoulder come up and just feel it through your core and then switch halfway through and change the arms. So make sure we're stretching in the whole core. And that's flexibility. Yes, welcome back to On The Bench. Hope you felt the full benefit of this week's Jim Gale's Home Workout. Well, in this part of the show, we're going to be chatting more to Bobby McEwen and also Omar Pasha. Big week for the whole Stingrays. Massive week in the build-up to what's happening this weekend. Ice hockey highlights from the match against Brayhead clan as well. Before that, let's bring you up to date with the latest sporting results from around our region in Team Talk. Well, a dramatic match. Uh, Always football first is where we start and what about that match? Grabbing the local headlines this week, North Ferriby United won the FA Trophy at Wembley after beating conference side Wrexham 5-4. Tension all the way, 5-4 on penalties. It was also a good weekend for Grimsby Town in the conference, keeping their uh, great form up here, winning 2-0 away at Welling, which means they moved into second place in the conference. Not such good news though for Scunthorpe United, their two-all draw with Notts County means they're just one point above the relegation zone. Elsewhere, Lincoln City in the conference lost to Forest Green by two goals to one. In rugby, Market Raisin and Louth lost 43-36 to Derby, whereas Cleethorpes thumped Keyworth 66 points to nil. That concludes this week's team talk. Well, joining me on the bench, Matt Denson, to talk about... Carol. Football high mat. Uh, well, it's only one place to start, isn't there? North Ferriby United. What brilliant. a day. Absolutely brilliant. I actually predicted it was going to win and they pulled it off. Brilliant. But in that way, in that fashion. What a. It was scary to start off with, wasn't it? Because obviously they went behind, pulled it back, fought for everything. Yeah. Underdogs came through. Brilliant. What about Grimsby? Let's. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's so much to talk about in our region this week, <laughs> but in the conference, I mean, they are flying high. Aren't They're doing they really, now? really well. And obviously the results went for them at the weekend as well. So, yeah, one point off the top, doing really well. Good run. Let's hope it continues. There's a lot of work still to do. Yeah, but they've got a decent run in as well. I was just looking at the remaining fixtures. Really, there's nobody there that they really need to be uh, worrying about. Uh, is please, there? please don't say things like that. You never know. They've got. They're all fighting for the points, aren't they? I mean, some of the runs that they've got in, there's, there's teams below that need the points. There's teams that need to make sure they're safe. Uh, and no game is won until that final whistle. You know mm. that. Alfreton, one of those teams they've got to they've got to be playing. Uh, decent running, unbeaten in eight as well. Great work by the Mariners. Let's talk about Scunthorpe United. Drew at Notts County. I mean, it was a it was a real scrap. That both teams really struggling to get away from the drop zone. As daft as it sounds, they couldn't afford to lose. They got a point out of it, which is something. Yeah, they they need more than that. They've got to be stronger. What's happened there without a win in nine? Yeah. It didn't seem so long ago we were talking about Scunthorpe, you know, really doing well under Mark Robbins, new manager as he was, things yeah. were being put in place and they were looking to put some decent results together. It's, it's any team sport, isn't it? When it goes wrong, it goes desperately wrong and they're all scratching their heads trying to, you know, sort out a solution. At the end of the day, this run, they've got to get out of it. They've got a point. Hopefully they can work off the point that they got the other day from the county. Lincoln City season, well, it's just turning into mid-table disappointment, really. That really sort of faded into sort of mid-table security for next season, and you know, not a lot happening there, is there? That's mm. not being rude. It's just, you know, they're safe. They'll look to next season, maybe strengthen and go from there. Let's go right back to where we started. Then North Ferriby United. You can't yeah. not talk about them. Um, a casualty, I suppose, in the world of football today. Wrexham's manager. Uh, I think that's a bit of everything, isn't it? A bit of the season's results. Obviously, losing yesterday. I think they've just got to have a they've got to have a final push Wrexham to just sort themselves out at the end of the season. It's the old question, what about North Ferriby? I mean they would have liked to have been up there challenging for promotion for Conference North, but they've got a trophy, haven't they? Is that what it's all about? 
if you ask them now, they'll be happy with the trophy. But yeah, it's all about pushing for promotion and getting into that next league, isn't it? I mean, but they've done very, very well. You know, when you think how small the Ferriby is, they've got good support, good team, good chairman. And I tell you what, hats off. I think everyone was supporting them yesterday. Yeah, the village is the name, just sums it up, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Great celebration. Well, back to ice hockey now. We can't leave it alone. Uh, as we know, the Stingrays have made the semi finals, the playoffs this weekend. Uh, how did they get there? It was the quarter final game against the Brayhead clan. Have a look at this. It's about to drop it as playoff hockey clan with pretty much a full roster to choose from. No exceptions. Oh, Jeff Smith not racing tonight, and Lee Ezers still out with that upper body injury. Back to the point, fired in. It comes loose. Kavanagh has to deal with it. It's not totally dealt with. Comes in. Bottle fires it in there. Kel Jones had to take a quick reaction save. There we go. From Stingrays. Official saw it differently, but it doesn't matter because Scott Bett has the puck here now, and he has Neil Trim out wide on the ice. Checks back inside, back to the point. Port to starboard. Frank finds it, fires it in. Oh! It's there! Wonderful work! Chris Frank! Salters, but it will be read by Jameson, who takes an almighty tumble. Keithson as well, following in. Well, it's been ramped up here now. He's back on his feet. Jameson, he took a heavy knock there. Sent absolutely tumbling by the tree that is Lee Salters. Redirect only comes as far as Sullivan. Sullivan finds Davis. Davis checks back inside, puts it in the slot. Haywood holds it. Well, surely a trip. Haley Cole comes in. Haywood and Knox has a, have a tussle here up against the board. Chilcott in there as well. Well, struggle there now. I think Davis and Chilcott have each other. No, it's Haywood and Chilcott have each other in a neck lock. Carson does everything he can. Puts it back, clan back to four skaters as Frederick tries to fire it in. It's a wonderful body save from Derek Whale. A big hit on Jordan Mayer as the shot comes flying in. It's wide. Great work from Arson. In the goal line. Clan returns to full strength. Shot comes in from Jameson. And it's there! The Stingrays equalised just after Clan returned to full strength. With what looked like a really good power play. But the Stingrays kept at it. Teams are so, so exposed at just that moment. Something shapes back up inside. Comes to Trim. Trim thinks he sees it! And he does seize it! Because that is tremendous! Clan with a power play goal. Have a go ahead goal by Neil Trim. Wonderful work. Full credit to Kavanaugh there. Keeping that puck alive, keep the danger alive. And Neil Trim well, opens up all of a sudden, fires it in, doesn't get past the block. Another opportunity. Oh, and it trickles. Brown makes a save. Oh, and it takes a bounce off Brown. And then Derek Will scores again in this game. Clan with another power play goal. Still has it. Fancies a shot. And it's Fritch who gets in the way of it well. Well, the two players, Fritch there and Avato taking a tumble. Well, it's Fritsch and both players kind of a little strike out each other. Derek Rail in centre right through with Omar Pasha. Well, Pasha calling Derek Rail for it. Keith, well, Keith picks his pocket, digs one way, digs inside, finds a bit of space for himself. Captain Keith, surely a trip there. No, he was pushing straight on. Well, of course, Keith with a real opportunity there, the penalty called in. Well, wonderful work from Captain Keith, streaming forward. Wonderful work, first of all, to pick the pocket as he approaches the puck. Pushes out well wide on the ice, Brown pushes forward very aggressively. Keith fires it against Orlows and their top scorer. Picks out Eric Galbraith, who picks a spot. And the Stingrays have brought themselves back into this tie with just 13 seconds left on the clock. It's Clan 3, Stingrays 2, and the Stingrays have given themselves a real lifeline heading into the second leg tomorrow night. In the hall. Take away. Kyle Jones does the safe thing and it does end. A victory for the clan, but a much more narrow one than they might have liked. Stingrays with a really important last gasp goal. It ends clan three. Stingrays two. What a performance. Bobby and Omar with me, uh, with Matt as well, of course. The atmosphere, Bobby. What must it have been like? Oh, last night was electric. Uh, it was the loudest I've heard in a lot, a lot of years. Uh, again, it was unexpected. I think. When we went uh, one nothing down, we were about 15 minutes to go. The fans thought that's the two goal cushion for Brayhead. It looked like, but the guys just dug deep and went for another gear. And so were even the fans a bit surprised, Emma? Do you think? 
I think everybody in the rink was surprised. You know, uh, it was a great result, but like Vladi just said, we were down one and uh, t by two in aggregate. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously there was some doubts at times, but we had a big shift uh, from uh, from our top players after, and they produced and they got a big goal, and obviously made it two one in aggregate in the game and. We tied it up. Some real heroics. Yeah. Uh, quite a save that we, we saw mm. towards the end. I know it's difficult to look ahead uh, beyond Nottingham at the moment. That's that's the big thing in, in your sights, of course. But I mean, looking at the next season, what about the ambition? What about the, the player spotting and, and looking at bringing players in? You, you, what do you have age of your, of your club at the moment? It's fairly young, Probably isn't it? Probably 24, 25 just yeah. now is the average age. But that was a choice we made this year. We decided to go down the college route and bring in guys coming out fresh out of college. Uh, a lot of teams don't. They go for the experience. But I tend to find that these players that are coming into the country are either been at the top where they were and they're on their way down. And I don't want to say picking up a paycheck, but that's what it feels like sometimes. Whereas these young guys have come in, we've put them in the showroom window and they're but performing. What about next season? What are you what's what are you, what's in your sights as far as well, it's his ambition. job. <laughs> We're getting both of you, but what about it for next season? I mean uh, when I took over this job it was I simply put it I wanted youth I wanted young guys. I wanted uh, guys that are full of energy, and I'm I'm a big believer in speed. I'm a big believer in um, work ethic, uh, tenacity. So that's what I look for every time. A player, if the player can skate, can work hard, well, he's already on the. But you don't just want players coming over and picking up the paycheck. Do you? Well, you know what? It's it's fine if they pick up the paycheck as long as they work hard. You know, I don't mind. It, yeah, as, mm -hmm. as long as they deliver, as long as they. Uh, they bring everything they need to bring to right, the let's team. Let's bring it right back to the here and now. Nottingham this weekend, of course. Uh, fans all important. What, what's the situation as far as tickets? Uh, well, the arena's actually been sold out. Uh, it's been sold out for quite a while now. But what we're finding now, because some of the big teams that expected to be there get knocked out, i.e. Nottingham, uh, Brayhead, obviously, their fans are now selling tickets. So they don't want to go to the finals now. So there's opportunities for fans to pick up some tickets, I would, I would guess, from these guys. And how many are you hoping to take? Oh, as many as we can. We want to make a big dent in it, and we want to make sure that the place is buzzing for the whole thing, right? So what's the word to the fans, it's briefly? Get to Nottingham. Get to Nottingham this weekend. Yep. Mm. Fabulous. What a great great time, isn't it? Well, time rapidly running out for us. Uh, before we go there, just time to mention Lincolnshire County Darts has an upcoming event. It's bringing local darts players together. The event's called the Lincolnshire Open. It'll be held on Easter Sunday. That's the 5th of April. It's at the Blues Club on North Street in Gamesborough. Well, all the information can be found on the Lincolnshire County Darts website for you. That's lincolnshirecountydarts.com. Well, sadly, that's all the time we have this week for the show. Thanks very much for tuning into On The Bench. Uh, as always, don't forget, you can catch the Toms, both of the Toms, Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. for On The Bench Extra. Just remains for me to say thanks again to Bobby. Yep. Omar, thanks. Matt, thanks, thanks very much. All the very best for this weekend. Go Thank to you. Cheers. And see you next week.